tonight as they host the Central Lady Rebels at a broadcast MAAA conference large school showdown. This one has a chance to decide the top two seeds in the conference tournament and a big regular season conference play tonight on KFMO. High School Basketball on AM 1240 KFMO. This is the first state community bank pregame show on AM 1240 KFMO. Mobile banking is perfect for the busy students or the on-the-go parents. When it comes to convenience, success starts here. The first state community bank pregame show on AM 1240 KFMO. Good evening from Farmington, Missouri. Glenn Berry, Jared Pettis, Jewel Boyer, and Taylor LeBriar, our entire crew. There's only 12 minutes until the tip-off in this one. They've already got the clock running between games as uh, we'll go ahead and get into our pregame conversation first as we hear from the head coach of the Central Lady Rebels, that's Aaron Tyree. Here to the first day community bank pregame show by the first year head coach of the Central Lady Rebels, Aaron Tyree, nine and two on the season, two wins out of that Lady Rebel Christmas tournament that you guys won. So you defend your home floor with the, the big winner, then you get two road wins after that. Now you come here at Farmington and start, to, or get your second conference game, or their start conference play after the turn of the year. What's the feeling like around the team right now as, uh, as far as the, uh, the energy goes? Uh, I feel like our energy is really good. I feel like we're playing really good basketball, you know, defending and then executing on offense because we play, you know, really unselfishly and uh, we're going, we got things going in the right direction, I think. You mentioned that unselfish play. We kind of alluded to it the last time we saw you guys before the Christmas tournament, how it just seems like your group just, it's not my point, it's our point. What goes into that? Is it just a group of girls that have played with each other the, uh, for uh, several years? Uh, that definitely plays a part into it, you know, but... Uh, we preach to the girls that as long as, you know, we win, it's good for us. And, I mean, I care less if one girl scores all the points <laughs> or we all split evenly, you know. Um, we try to make that make them know make them know that, you know, it's about us, not about me. So, One of the girls that's uh, been coming in and out as far as starting goes this season, Courtney Dortch. Whenever she's in, it just seems like the team's got that energy that, not that they lack, it just seems like she brings something else to the court. What does she bring from your perspective to the team when she's on the floor? Uh, I definitely think Courtney brings energy. You know, she's been really good uh, for us this year. She knows the scouting report probably better than most, and she's always executing her responsibilities. And then on top of that, she's just ready to step into any role, and it's been really good for us. And you get the Farmington Knights. Last year's head coach for the Rebels, Josh Mapes, moves over to be an assistant for Farmington. Do, ha, do the girls, have they said anything about that leading up to this game? I mean, you know, I think I think they, they want to win this game. Obviously, Central Farmington, it's a, a heated rivalry, but – um, I think I think there's a little on the line for them. I, I feel like I try not, you know, put too much pressure on them, but I think it's one they really want to win. For you as a coach, is this one you would really want to win? Obviously, you want to win it because it's a conference game, but going up against a, an old friend, I guess. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I guess you could say that. I learned a lot from Coach Mapes. You know, really thankful for him over the past uh, few years of my career, and it would it'd be nice to get a win on him. You know. Central's played really well against Farmington in recent history. In fact, Farmington hasn't won a game since 2013. What do the Lady Rebels do well against the Farmington Knights? Uh, it's the way we prepare. You know, I feel like our girls are always really prepared, and I hope that you know I get to continue that this year and can say that after tonight. Um, and we just, you know, I feel like we kind of got their number, and I hope that continues tonight. Christmas tournament, it's a different style of game. It's a different atmosphere on your home floor. Now you're playing in a conference game with a probably a bit larger crowd than you've had the last couple of games. But is this still one of those games where you have to come out and create your own energy on the road in a, an atmosphere that might not be as high a level as it was for the Christmas tournament championship game? Uh, I hope not. Uh, I hope the girls are ready. You know, I hope they bring their own energy with uh, being a conference opponent and a conference rival. And then, you know, like we alluded to, early to earlier in this about – Having Coach Mapes here, and you know how well, how good of a coach he is, and they'll be just as prepared. So I think we you know we got to bring our best game tonight. And the Knights undefeated on their home floor. What do the Knights do well? Uh, they got some kids who can really shoot the basketball. They execute, you know, a lot of their sets and inbounds, and hopefully we can take that away from them tonight. Coach, thank you so much. Best of luck tonight. All right, thank you very much. That's the head coach of the Central Lady Rebels, Aaron Tyree, in his first season. The Rebels 9-2 and two on the season. You can join us online at kfmosports.com. Brought to you by Ledco Community Credit Union, serving the residents of St. Francis, St. Genevieve, and Madison Counties, offering totally free checking and free Internet banking. Use the mobile banking app for bill pay and check deposit capture services. We'll take a break in the first state community bank pregame show when we come back here from both the head coach and the assistant coach of the
At First State Community Bank, our mission goes beyond banking. We grow stronger communities by helping people and organizations achieve and protect financial success. Our mission is to view each transaction, each hello, each handshake, each meeting and phone call as a way to improve the lives of others. No matter how you define financial success, see our team today and we'll help you achieve it. First State Community Bank, success starts here. Member FDIC, online at fscb.com. Show to the First State Community Bank pregame show by the 10th year head coach of the Farmington Knights, Rusty Sonsgra, nine and three on the season. We're already into the second half with the, uh, the turn of the calendar after that Rockwood Summit tournament. You played Dexter, won that one, but a game against Delta was postponed. What's the feeling like with the team at this point in the year, and, uh, and what have they succeeded in this far? Well, we're pretty proud of how far they've come so far this season. Um, you know, like I said earlier, we we got a lot of kids that are older, but not a lot of varsity experience. Um, but they've come in and they've really they've really bought into what we're doing, and uh, we're we're really proud of how how the season started so far. Does that make your job as a coach a little bit easier when they can come in and? already put up nine wins and not have that much varsity experience yeah absolutely um they're, they're a smart group um and they work hard and and you know they just get after it every day in practice um and in the off season they did a great job this summer coming in and working on all of our stuff and and knowing and understanding a lot of it before the season even started what does that say about the group of girls you have coming in in the summer and working out say, preparing for this season well, it's good for the younger kids to see the older kids coming in and knowing that it's an important, um, you know, it's an important part of our program is, is the summer and, and the open gyms and stuff. And, you know, they've done a great job of being leaders. Um, you know, the senior group that left last year, they did, they did as well. So, you know, we've kind of got um, the younger kids buying into what we're doing as well. So it's good every, su every summer. We're to that point in the year where the games get a little bit more meaningful each day. Is that something you see as a coach? And, and how do you prepare your team for conference play? Well, we, we try to divide the season into three parts. Um, the first part before or the Christmas tournament and, and before that, um, we kind of try to break it down into those. And then we, you know, now we start preparing for the conference and conference tournament. And then after that, we'll prepare for districts. But, um, you know, for us, we, like I said, we just try to break it into three parts. Um, tell the kids that, you know, each, each part of the season is important. And, uh, you know, like right now, we, we're preparing for Central and, and all the other big conference schools. Is this conference game, is this one a little bit more important than, say, the ones you'll play next week before the conference tournament? Uh, every game's important, um, you know, but Central, again, to win the conference, you got to go through Central most of the time. So, um, you know, it's definitely an important game. Now, last year it was a three-way tie for the uh, regular season conference championship. Would it mean more to just be the sole winners of that? Well, anytime you're a part of a conference championship, no matter if it's a three-way tie or whatever, it's always good to be a part of a championship. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how important are these games as far as seeding goes for the conference tournament? Obviously, it's a conference game, a regular season game, so it has a lot of meaning. But how important are they? Well, the com obviously, the conference seedings um, will be based off of what your conference and how you do, and usually whoever wins the big school conference usually gets the first seed. So, um, you know, it just depends on um, where you're at at the end of the season and, and what your record is at the end of the, the conference. You're 3-0 and on your home floor this season. What does the team do well here at the Black Knight Fieldhouse? Um, well, I don't know that it's here or away or whatever, but um, I'm pretty pleased with how we've um, executed. Um, you know, we've done a really good job, and we've thrown a lot at these kids, and, and they've done a great job. Uh, it's a really smart group. Um, they uh, they know everything that we're trying to do, and uh, we've had three really good days of prep, and uh, hopefully they'll come out and just execute tonight. And you got the Rebels on your home floor. What do you know about Central? Uh, they're good. You know, they, they uh, just like they are every year. Um, you know, they're running a lot of the same stuff they did when Coach Mapes is there. And, um, you know, I – there's a reason they went to the final four last year and got most everybody back and um, you know they're really good and um, you know we're just gonna have to get back in transition uh, keep them off the boards and uh, hopefully make some shots does it plan to your hand that you have their head coach from last year as an assistant and they run some of the same plays well I don't know if it does or not um, <laughs> you know we we've scouted them a lot the last few years and and pretty much knew a lot of the stuff they they uh, ran but it didn't seem to work out far as then so um, you know, hopefully it's on our side tonight. Well, Coach, thank you so much. Best of luck tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. That was Rusty Sons girl. We got to talk it over with the former head coach at Central, Josh Mapes. Former head coach at Central took the team to the Final Four. Is it different now coaching against the Rebels? 
It's definitely awkward, you know. Today was very nerve-wracking for me. You know, I, I have a lot of great memories with those kids. I've known those kids at Park Hills forever, and I've got a lot of respect for their coaching staff, and, you know, they're a great team, and they're very well coached, and I wish them the, the best of luck, just not tonight. <laughs> And you mentioned their coaching staff, Aaron Tyree, an assistant under you for the last five years, and now he gets the head coaching job. Tell us a little bit about Coach Tyree. Coach Tyree was a grinder. You know, Coach Tyree did everything in his power to make our program better, and he did. You know, he, he's more than ready. He sat on the bench for me with me for four or five years, and he was probably as good as any other coach that we may have played against, you know, as well. And Coach Daniels is a great coach, too. And the unsung hero over there is – Coach Mills, I mean, Coach Mills has been in Rebel basketball forever and ever, and I got a lot of respect for him, and he's just a great man, and they're a bunch of great people. Well, you're on the Farmington Knights now. You're not no longer with the Central Lady Rebels. How's the season been for you so far? You know, it, it's been very fun. You know, it's been nice to take a step back and not be stressed all the time and, and crabby at home. Not, not have to time. do these interviews? <laughs> not have to do, do these interviews. It's been kind of nice stepping back for sure, but, uh, you know, I've enjoyed my time here. Everyone has been very welcoming, so the school year has been great, so I can't complain. Coach, always nice to see you. Best of luck tonight. We appreciate your coverage. Thanks. That is Josh Mapes and Rusty Sunsgrove, coaches at Farmington for the Knights. They're 9-3 and three this season. They've won their last game against Dexter, but haven't played since January 4th. Their game against Delta on the 6th was postponed due to snow and ice. After this broadcast, we'll hand out some free pizza courtesy of Little Caesars with locations in Farmington and Deloge. You can get a classic cotton ready pizza for $6.99 or a large thin crust pepperoni pizza for $7.99. Available all day, every day at Little Caesars. Again, those locations in Farmington and Deloge. That'll wrap things up on the first day community to bank pregame show when we come back. Thinking about your next step? Think Middle Area College. We offer small class sizes, transferable credits, and tuition rates less than half of the university. It's affordable, quality education. Apply at mineralarea.edu. Middle Area College. It starts here. We're for the state of Missouri. We're for trout fishing, barbecuing, underarching, fountain swimming, road tripping, and show me saying. We're for people who would live here, people who won't, people who farm, and for people who don't. We are Missouri Farm Bureau Insurance, and if you're a Missourian, we're for you. When accidents happen, trust the experts at Griffin Automotive Design. Our dedicated team restores your vehicle to its pre-collision glory with precision and care. Your vehicle deserves the best, so visit us today for a seamless repair experience at 900 Point View Drive in Bon Terre, Missouri. We're more than just a classic car restoration shop. We're also a fully equipped state-of-the-art collision center. So give us a call at 573-534-2300. Trucks, cars, SUVs, whatever you're looking for, we have it here at Lead Belt Auto Sales. Come on by and take a look at our great selection of trucks, cars, SUVs, family vehicles, and sport cars. Worried about financing? If you have bad credit, no credit, or even great credit, visit LeadBeltAutoSales.com to get pre-approved today. We have a vehicle for you in any payment range. Just past Mental Area College, and that's Lead Belt Auto Sales on Flat River Road. Struggling with your car but don't have a reliable shop? Wade's Auto Service is a complete maintenance and repair shop in the Parkland area since 2015. Locally owned and operated, Wade's Auto Service wants to be your first choice for all your auto service and repair needs. Plus, they offer a two-year, 24,000-mile part and labor warranty. Trust Wade's Auto Service, 228 East Harrison Street in Farmington, or give them a call at 573-664-1302. It's never too early to start crunching those numbers, downloading those forms, and organizing all those receipts you put in your shoebox. Getting frustrated yet? Yeah. Try crunching this number, 573-546-3104. Accountant Stephanie Kitchell with Kitchell Accounting and Tax Service in Ironton. Stephanie is available year-round for tax and business consulting, accounting, and bookkeeping, and payroll. Crunch that number one more time, 573-546-3104. A trusted name in the Arcadia Valley area, Stephanie Kitchell with Kitchell Accounting and Tax Service in Ironton. Looking for the perfect ride doesn't have to be stressful. Ugh. McLean Motors in Farmington is your go-to destination for pre-owned cars, trucks, and Jeeps. McLean Motors has something for everyone from rugged trucks to Jeeps, and McLean Motors offers flexible financing options to fit your budget. Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and Saturdays from 8 to 3. Drive home your dream car today. Woo! 
from McLean Motors, located next to Dairy Queen in Farmington, where your journey on the road begins. Maple Street Resale in Farmington is a one-stop shop to help you save money. It's a store full of yesterday's treasures and unique and hard-to-find items. Maple Street Resale has local vendors that stock the shelves with toys, clothes, shoes, and other treasures. Oh, and did I forget to mention, there's a Bath and Body Works vendor as well. Stop by and see their wide selection today. Maple Street Resale, open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 till 6 p.m., and Sunday, 11 to 4, at 712 Maple Street in Farmington. and the Central Lady Rebels in a game that could decide the champion of the MAAA large school, although we're only two games in for the Lady Rebels, one for the Farmington Knights. Jared Pettis, Glenberry, Jewel Boyer, Taylor LeBriar, our entire crew. Glenberry's got the shelter insurance starting lineups. All right, we're going to get the uh, starting lineups first for the visiting Central Lady Rebels. They come into this game 2-1 and one, uh, overall in the, uh, well, it says 2-1, and one, but they're actually 9-2. I couldn't see that in the dark here. They're coached by Aaron Tyree. We'll start Chloe Dishbine, the 5'10 senior. Also making the start, Sydney Miles, the 5'7 junior. Courtney Dorch, the 5'6 senior. You've got uh, the two O'Connor girls, Alyssa, the 5'7 junior, and Taylor, the 5'7 junior, for the Central Lady Rebels. As There's the lights. lights. <laughs> there comes the light. So now we can see the Farmington Knights. They are 9-3 overall. They will start Madison Mills, the senior. Bryn Johnson, the senior. Aniston Mapes. Uh, also, uh, Shelby Bolian, who was the senior, and Raylan LaCava, the senior, for the Knights, who are, again, 9-2. and two. Starting lineups brought to you by Shelter Insurance. Proud to be a part of high school sports. Your local Shelter Insurance agent, Stephen Scott Haggerty of Shelter Mutual Insurance at 517 East Main and Park Hills. Insuring the parkland since 1955. And Brian Laramore Agency at 306 North Washington Street in Farmington. Allow Brian to help protect your family with life insurance. Your local Shelter Insurance agents, we're your shield. We're your shelter. Opening tip brought to you by Boyd & Associates. One by Farmington. Right to left on your listening device. And it's time to play some basketball. Nice feed down low. Shelby Bowling got it to Raylan LaCava. And she lays it off glass and in an early lead for the nine and three farming tonight to wear the white uniforms that tip off brought to you by Boyd and Associates turning complicated matters into simple concepts John Boyd with Boyd and Associates has been bringing accounting integrity character client focus and dedication to our local community for 20 years deep three far wing wouldn't fall for Taylor O'Connor rebound for Raylan LaCava out of the backcourt Mapes spot up nope deep two near side can't hit that one Taylor O'Connor's got the rebound after it got too much of the base of the iron as it met the glass. Taylor O'Connor to dish fine at the near wing. Pump fake dribble drive in through the key. Lay it off the boards. Can't hit that one. And LaCava picks up another rebound. Nice start to this one for LaCava. Two rebounds and a bucket. And I think she can be a big, big difference in this game if she can stay loose down there and uh, get free. Here's Bren Johnson met by dish fine. Foul is going to be called on dish fine. The whistle came late. Aaron Tyree wants a walk. And he's giving it to the official, and the foul is the first on Central. And I think he's probably right, because in that particular situation, there was a foul in that situation, but she was falling down backwards and trying to stand up when she got maybe fouled. 6.55 to go in the first, 2 nothing. Farmington. Madison Mills tries to tack on with the three, can't hit it, but an offensive rebound. Raylan LaCava, pull up Jay from the baseline, wouldn't hit it from 10 feet. Mapes has the rebound now for the Farmington Knights. They wear the white uniforms, lobbed inside bowling. Cuts back to the basket, can't hit that one short off the rim. There was Sydney Miles with the defensive rebound, and out of the backcourt, it's Alyssa O'Connor. Down low for Dishbine, spin move underneath, met by Bowling, set it up top for the lead. Alyssa O'Connor straight on, can't hit that one from the land of plenty, and Madison Mills has the rebound, and Farmington is all over the boards on both sides of the floor tonight. Right now, uh, Raylan LaCava's already got three rebounds in this game, and as you said, Farmington on the boards, only giving the Central Lady Rebels one shot at the basket each time. Well, you know, Aniston Mapes wants this one just as bad as her father on the uh, bench, the assistant coach for Farmington. Three and far side, that wouldn't fall 
by Raylan LaCava, and the rebound again for Sydney Miles. Alyssa O'Connor on the near side out of the backcourt. She'll send it wing to wing to Taylor O'Connor. Into the corner, Chloe Dishbein, dribble drive on the baseline. Nice cut, can't hit. Madison Mills has the rebound. Oh, but it was stolen away. That was Alyssa O'Connor. She went to lay it in, but she's fouled and will shoot two. Well, that was a nice move there by Alyssa O'Connor to get in there and get that ball away from the Farmy tonight. I'm waiting for the Central Lady Rebels to put on that full court press. That is something I think could do some damage here tonight. Uh, then again, you got Aniston Mapes, who's really good at handling the ball for the Knights. First free throw for Alyssa O'Connor at the line to our right. She hits it. Free throw is brought to you by Complete Vision Care, offering quality eye care, premium eyewear, and a customized visual solution for every patient. Locations in Lennington and Festus. Second free throw, no good. The rebound collected by Shelby Bowling. If I am correct, Glenn, that is her second rebound. Yep, second rebound for Shelby Bowling, three for LaCava, so you can see already they are getting on the boards tonight. LaCava works out of the backcourt and into the key. She'll put it off glass, walk, and turn it over. The shot won't count. And I was getting ready to say, if that's not a walk, uh, the Central fans may come out of the stands on that one. <laughs> kind of a pivot spin move and then an extra three or four steps. 5.29 to go in the first, 2-1, to one, Farmington leads. The funny thing was the ball went down. The Farmington Knight fans went crazy thinking it was a bucket and a uh, second shot, but uh, no luck. Here's Dishbein driving baseline right underneath for Blair Sitton. She'll hoist from five and hit it, and Central's got their first lead with 5.10 to go in the first, 3-2, to two, and Blair Sitton in the books for a point. And here comes uh, that two, press. Yep. Full court pressure from Central. Aniston Mape spins out of it. Through a screen set by LaCava. Mapes, righty runner off glass, and she got it. And the team has switched leads as Farmington gets it back. Well, that's how you beat it. I mean, you got a ball player who can handle the ball that well, like Mapes can. She took it right to him, got around him, and laid it up and in. Here's Mills, lob it inside. Check that Miles, lob it inside. Back out, Sitton gets it to Alyssa O'Connor. Can't hit on that three, but Sydney Miles has an offensive board. Back to Taylor O'Connor through the lane. Her shot missed everything, goes out of bounds, and it was not touched. Aaron Tyree wants a foul. He's not going to get it. Well, we've seen a little bit more physical play here tonight in this game at the beginning, and that's okay. If they keep doing that all night long, that's fine. If they start calling it close to the vest, then we get a little problem. 4.30 to go in half number, uh, quarter number one, that is. 4-3 to three the score, and Farmington has the ad in the rock. Aniston Mapes out of the backcourt, taking it to the near side at the wing, trying to get around Alyssa O'Connor. Her shot was deflected, and Bowling couldn't get the offensive rebound, and as Taylor O'Connor collects it, well, Shelby Bowling just ran right into her. That'll be an easy foul call, her first and the team's second. Well, that was just a case of Shelby Bowling going after the ball, but I think she kind of lost her balance just a bit as she was going towards O'Connor, and she just ran right over and gave it up for Taylor O'Connor for just standing there and taking the foul. Four to three is the score, 4.15 to go in the first. Alyssa O'Connor across the timeline to the far side for Miles, got it back to Alyssa O'Connor, resetting the offense with the play as she takes it on the wing far side. Alyssa O'Connor up top now for Gracie Populous, straight on. Down low, Sydney Miles lost in the coverage. No one went to get her, and she'll lay it in. And Central's got the lead back 5-4. to four. Yeah, you're looking for Chloe Dishbind or somebody like that down there, but instead they found Miles, and she was all alone on the left baseline. On the near side, Madison Mills. We got an out-of-town score to get to you. It's a final from Kingston. We'll get to that to you momentarily. It's on the girls' side of things. Out-of-town scoreboard brought to you by Mineral Area Overhead Door. Far side, Mills. Between the circles for LaCava. Check that bowling. Trying to go to LaCava far side, but Dishbine knocked it out of bounds with 3.29 to go in the first. And now we'll get that score to you. Final score from Kingston as the Arcadia Valley Lady Tigers get back in the win column. They end their, sh I think it was a six-game losing streak. And they win at 67-30. Lob down low. Bryn Johnson receives. Nice assist by Mills, and Johnson lays it in. 6-5 to five as Farmington retakes the advantage. I think Bryn Johnson could be a key to this game as well. We saw her play a very good game last time we did a Farmington game over here. And she got hot early on, and she was doing a lot of things, uh, little things that helped them win. Alyssa O'Connor had Blair sitting to the cup. Can't hit on the layup, but she is fouled, and Sitton will shoot two. And the foul is going to be the second, I believe, on Madison Mills. I'll tell you what, right now, there's nobody down there that can get uh, in front of and stop Blair Sitton. If she keeps getting that wide open and get those kind of looks tonight, she could have a big, big night and probably lead this Rebel team in scoring. 3.05 to go in the first. Free throw is brought to you by Complete Vision Care. The ideal choice for your routine exams and anything regarding your eye care since 1966. Locations in Lettington and Festus. Sitton makes good on the first. We're tied six apiece. 
Jared Pettis, Glenn Berry, Taylor LeBriar, and Jewel Boyer, our entire crew. We're online at kfmosports.com with live video. Second free throw for Sitton. Can't hit that one. We stay knotted up 6-all. LaCava's got another rebound. She'll get it to Aniston Mapes in the backcourt. Mapes to LaCava on the near side across the center strike. LaCava cuts back to the middle. Now back to the near side as she takes it to the elbow. Got away with the walk, but she turned it over anyways as Alyssa O'Connor deflected the pass away and stole it. Down low, Miles. She can't hit, and the foul on Bryn Johnson. Well, I think Farmington is a more physical team than the... Um Central Lady Rebels are. I think Central can be a little physical and in case of, you know, their defense. They can really get on top of you. They can make you do a lot of things. But I think Farmington's a rougher team, and uh, they're going to try to use that tonight. Sydney Miles good on the first of two free throws. Central's got the one-point lead, 7-6. to six. Free throws brought to you by Complete Vision Care. The second one goes as well. Sydney Miles leads the team in scoring. She's got four of the team's eight. And Central leads by two. Their largest lead of the game, 8-6. to six. Out of the backcourt, this is Mapes. Gets it to LaCava, head of the arc. LaCava in, lost the dribble. It goes out of bounds at a Farmington turnover. I think right now LaCava is trying to do too much. I think she's trying to play point guard. I think she's trying to go in as power forward at times and, of course, do what she does the best, and that is rebound and get down there and do a lot of things. And it's caused a couple of turnovers. She just needs to relax, play her position, get down there, let them get the ball to her. Inbound Taylor O'Connor to Alyssa O'Connor, and Alyssa crosses the timeline to Dishpine, back to Alyssa now at the near wing. Lob it back to Dishpine at the elbow. She'll hoist from there, can't hit, and a late whistle comes wow. in after the fact, and it might go against Aniston Mapes. Oh, no, it's going to be Shelby Bowling. That'll be her second, and that puts Central in the bonus with 2.22 to go, and Dishpine will shoot two. And, and, you know, I don't have any trouble with the foul. The fact was the ball was in the air coming down when the whistle was blown, and I think everybody was like, okay, what was that? And I think if you're going to give her continuation, you got to call it right when it happens. Don't wait for it to fall and see if it goes in. Exactly. Because then you start to get the coaches like, well, then that's on the floor if you're blowing it after the fact. First free throw goes from the Complete Vision Care stripe to our right, second one as well. And it's 10 to 6 Central. And if you're Farmick, you, you didn't want to see that because Central hasn't hit a three yet. They can shoot it well from perimeter. Farmington needs somebody that can answer that. If they can get somebody to answer the Central Rebel sh three-point shooting, and Farmington will be in business tonight. Here's Mapes on the near side in the corner. She'll unload from the land of plenty and miss everything. Courtney Dorch fought for the rebound and knocked it away to Alyssa O'Connor. Two minutes left in the first. Central leads 10 to six, trying to open up the game. Alyssa O'Connor on the far side to the corner for Taylor from downtown Farmington. That one's just short. And Bryn Johnson comes in for the rebound. Ooh, I don't like that foul call. It's going against Dorch. There wasn't much contact. No, there wasn't much going on down there. And that's what I talked about. Early on, we get a lot of shoving and pushing. We got guys or ladies running in there and getting pushed around a little bit. And then you get a foul call like that. And you're like, okay, what is it? One or the other? A minute 50 to go in the first. Four-point lead for Central. And they apply full court pressure as McKenzie Tucker inbounds to Aniston Mapes. Central student section chant air ball at Aniston Mapes as she crosses the timeline, a former Lady Rebel. Mapes head of the arc, now to the near side for Emily Bauer. Bauer lost it down low, poked away, and Alyssa O'Connor steals, one to beat. Alyssa O'Connor, now to the near side, Gracie Populous on the back door feed, but she dribbled off her knee and out of bounds. And Farmington will get it back, 89 seconds left in the first quarter, 10 to six Central. And we get a substitution as Oh, Man, uh, Madison Mills, excuse me, will check back into the game, as will Sydney Miles for Central. And I think Alyssa O'Connor is frustrated with herself because she gave a pass away that really wasn't the best pass. Uh, they had a two-on-one going. They just couldn't get it done. And the inbound again to Mapes. A minute 25 to go in the first. Mapes slowing things down across the timeline as she comes on the near side, trailing by four, and a hand check foul is called against Alyssa O'Connor. She can't believe it, her first and the team's third. And that's another late whistle. The, the lady was laying on the ground. She had already fallen down, and here comes the whistle from the back end of the court. This official on this near side is calling things very closely while everybody else is calling it a little different. Well, there was more contact there that wasn't called. Mills at the near wing probing in through a hand check. Bounce pass down low. Nice play, and McKenzie Tucker lays it in with the backdoor layup. 10-8, to eight, a minute 08 to go. Central's got a chance to uh, extend that advantage back to four, or maybe make it a five-point game. I uh, check that, extend the advantage, yeah, four or five. Yeah, can't, we it. can't do math here tonight, folks. <laughs> Blair sitting in the corner, sends it to the far wing for uh, Taylor O'Connor, thought about a three, instead goes to Sydney Miles. She'll lob it inside to Blair sitting through contact, can't hit, got her own rebound, put back, goes. 
Man, Blair sitting with a couple of rebounds tonight. Make it 12 to eight, quick outlet. Madison Mills on the near side at the wing. Interior feed to a cutting Tucker. Wild shot over her head, couldn't get it. No one's there for the rebound except Taylor O'Connor. 30 seconds to go and a four point game. Miles far side, the Lady Rebels lead and a foul called on Bryn Johnson. That'll be her second and that'll put Sydney Miles at the line to shoot too. If you watch the Central Lady Rebels, they've got shorter players on the floor when it comes to rebounding. They're going up against LaCava, bowling, some others down there as well, but they're doing such a great job of pushing in and basically keeping the, uh, the Knights off the board and they're doing a great job of blocking out. First free throw for Miles, good. She's three of three in this quarter from the free throw line, 27.7 to go and a handful of substitutions coming in. Courtney Dortch, Taylor O'Connor back in. Gracie Populous, and for Farmington, Emily Bauer. Second free throw for Miles, knocked them both down at the complete Vision Care line to our right, 27.7 to go. It's a six point lead for the Lady Rebels. That could be some big free throws here tonight. If Central does well here, or Farmington, that could be the difference in the game. There's gonna be a foul called against Sydney Miles as she put a body to Aniston Mapes. That's the fourth on Central, and Mapes will receive an inbound from the near side as Mills will throw it in at the scorer's table. About three feet to the left of the center stripe. Farmington in the white uniforms, Farmington on the front, Knights on the back, all above the number. Mills to the corner on the near side as she inbounds, got it to Raylan LaCava. 15 on the clock, LaCava to the far elbow, picked up her dribble, now to the near side, tried to go to Mills, but she was covered, and Taylor O'Connor steals. Out of the backcourt with eight, Central's got final possession. Alyssa O'Connor thought about one, gets it to Taylor O'Connor. She'll unload with three on the clock, can't hit that three, but it rattles in. They brought the TJ Full on Fieldhouse rims over here to Farmington, and it's 17 to eight on that main three by Taylor O'Connor as the buzzer sounds. Quarter break brought to you by Missouri Farm Bureau agent Mike Sansegra on Farmington and Jonathan Stepp. To everyone who's hungry for something special. Culver's is the place for us. Hi, what can I make fresh for you today? It's nice to be greeted by people who are glad to see you. And I appreciate that they use real ingredients like fresh beef and Wisconsin cheese. The frozen custard is so fresh and creamy, it tastes like it was made just for us. It's our pleasure. Just spending time with family, that's what mealtime at Culver's is all about. From Wisconsin with love, welcome, welcome to delicious. delicious. Sorry, as Farmington leads the Central Lady Rebels. Uh, check that, the Central Lady Rebels lead the Farmington Knights. Wow, Central gets first possession. Yeah, it's kind of unfair if you think about yeah, it. I mean, they broadcasters just got, 0 for 2 tonight, Glenn. Just got the three in there, and then they get it right back. Dishbine underneath, can't hit that one. Dorch fights for the rebound. We Players collide, whistle blows. Jump ball is called, and the arrow favors Farmington. 12 seconds into the quarter. And you want to know what uh, Courtney Dorch brings to the Central Lady Rebels, that right there. Ball coming down, looks like it was gonna be an easy rebound for Farmington. She goes right up against it and just ties the play up. Mackenzie Tucker, the freshman, trying to lob it out of the backcourt, does to Shelby Bowling into the corner. That's Bryn Johnson, far side three, knock it down. Bryn Johnson's got five, 17-11. That's what you need if you're Farmington to get back into this one. The first three-point shot made for the Knights. Well, it took all the first quarter for Central to get their first three to go. Lob down low, Dorch back out, Alyssa O'Connor. Wing to wing feed and out of the far corner as it goes to Sydney Miles. She'll hoist from the land of plenty, rattle that one out and it falls in. Man, I alluded to it after that first quarter that Central brought those TJ full on Fieldhouse rims. That one was another one that looked like it had no chance of falling. I'm thinking if those rims had been a Mac this weekend, both teams on uh, Mineral Area would have scored 150 points. Oh, absolutely. Back out on perimeter, this is Mapes. Send it to the far wing for Tucker. Tucker through a screen set by Bryn Johnson, picked up her dribble, now she's got no one to pass to. Mills opens up at the far wing and they get it to her. Mills probes in, trying to get around Taylor O'Connor. Man-to-man -man defense for Central. Mapes at the foul line, nice pivot as she gets to the elbow, can't hit that, rebound knocked away and it's collected by Sydney Miles. 
20 to 11, the lead favoring the Central Lady Rebels, 6.38 to go in the second. And I tell you what, Central is going after the rebounds a lot harder than Farmington is right now. Taylor O'Connor, far wing three, knock it down again. Taylor O'Connor's got six. When she's feeling it from outside the arc, it's gonna be a tough night for anybody playing against her. As Mills gets it on the near side in the corner through the key, send it down low, bowling, extra pass, Tucker, near corner three, deep two, wouldn't fall. Dishbine's got the rebound. Dishbine coming out of the backcourt of the near side. Dishbine on perimeter. Dishbine hop and got it down low for Dortch. To the near side in the corner, Alyssa O'Connor. Up top, Taylor. Oh, she thought about one from the courthouse. Got it to Dishbine at the elbow far side. She'll hoist and hit from there. Nobody contesting that shot. Four for Dishbine. It's 25 to 11. There's that timeout by Rusty Sonsagraw. That's the first timeout call tonight. Timeout's brought to you by Missouri Farm Bureau agent Mike Sonsagraw and team. It's not every day you can save money. Oh, wait, you can. Hi, Jenny here from Big Deals. When you shop Big Deals, you'll save money every day on dozens of gift certificates from local businesses like these. Colton Steakhouse, Paw Affection Pet Grooming, Charlie's Mowing Service and Snow Removal, and the Oasis Christian Bookstore and Gifts. They're all part of our Big Deals. Twenty-five, eleven, with 5.55 to go in the second. Inbound of the baseline for the Farmington Knights. Full court pressure from Central. They weren't showing that that much to start the first quarter and applied it, and that's when things changed. I think right now Farmington, everybody on the Farmington Knights is trying to do too much. I think Aniston Mapes is trying to do too much. I think LaCava is. They just need to play their game. Uh, they need some help from Bryn Johnson and others, but they just need to play their game, and if they do, they can get right back into this thing. Mills up top, probes in, righty runner can't hit. Offensive rebound, Bowling put back good in the foul. Shelby Bowling in the books for two, and the end one to follow makes it 25-13 with 5.34 to go as Farmington's trying to get back into this one. The foul is the second on Chloe Dishbein and the first on Central in quarter number two. And I think that is part of their game right there. They get a shot from outside, they get the, uh, the uh, rebound in down low and put it up and in, and now, uh, Aaron Tyree's asking questions about uh, the, one of the officials about something. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I think but, he was uh, wanting them to confirm that it was Dishbine who was called for the foul. That could be a big foul with 5.34 to go in here in the second quarter. You don't want to see Chloe Dishbine get into foul trouble. Absolutely. Shelby Bowling misses on the and one. Brought to you by Complete Vision Care. And the rebound for Blair Sitton as she gets it to Alyssa O'Connor. Alyssa O'Connor lobs to Dishbine at the foul line. Holds there, got it back out for Alyssa. Taylor wants it. Thought about one. Back to Alyssa, head of the arc to the near side. Gracie Populous, 5.15 to go. Lob inside. Taylor O'Connor couldn't control it. LaCava wasn't ready for it. It went off of her, and Taylor O'Connor was able to pick it back up. And as she did that, Shelby Bowling got her arms on it. We go help ball, and this time the arrow favors Central. Well, that time Alyssa O'Connor, I think when she got down low, she just had an opportunity to get down there and get an easy shot. She just rushed herself just a little too much. Populous on the near side in the corner. Got it up top for Alyssa O'Connor. Far side, Taylor O'Connor from downtown. Knock it down. Taylor O'Connor's got nine, and it's 28-13. Five minutes to go in the second. And Farmington, again, needs to play their game. They don't need to try to do too much. Can't score 15 points all at once. Just come back, get some uh, consistent offense. Mills through a screen, but staying with her dish fine. Mills back to the near side as she gets it to LaCava. Into the corner for Mapes. Up top, here's Bryn Johnson probing in. Johnson forced on perimeter by Taylor O'Connor. Back to the far side as they get it to Mills. Farmington's got it in an offensive trip. Mills forced again back out. The central defense not letting Farmington get inside on it. Players collide. Are we going to go hell ball here when Farmington didn't even have arms on it? We are, and the arrow favors the Knights. That's a break for Farmington. I, yeah, you know, I, I know there's a tie-up down there, but Bryn Johnson was sitting on the ball. I mean, she really didn't have her arms on it. She didn't have possession of it. But, uh, you know, they blow the whistle. they got to call something. Mapes needs to get it in before the five count and does. And Mapes gets it back from Bowling. Mapes can't hit on that floater. It's rebounded by Alyssa O'Connor out of the backcourt. It's the Central Lady Rebels leading by 15. Gracie Populous had time to think about it, and she makes it splash. I tell you what, if Central keeps shooting the three ball like this, if they keep getting production from not only the O'Connors, but 
about everybody else out there. And there's an offensive foul on Raylan LaCava. It's going to be a long night for the Farmington Knights. It's 31-13, her first and the team's first on LaCava on the offensive foul and a charge. She was on the train tracks coming down the lane, lost the dribble and didn't slow down her speed, ran right into a defender. And it'll be central ball with Taylor O'Connor to inbound. I think right now you've got to watch Farmington. I think if Rusty Sanchegraw has to say anything now, he's going to say, look, look deep inside of yourself. Got to bring up as much as you possibly can. Get back into this ball game. See if you can do something with it. Halfway through the second quarter, 31-13. Out of town scoreboard check, courtesy of Mineral Area Overhead Door. We'll get that to you next stoppage. Down low pass, Taylor O'Connor can't hit on the layup. Wanted a foul, didn't get it. Looks over at the official and the rebound for Bryn Johnson. Out of the backcourt, Mapes gets it to Mills on the near wing. Mills back to Mapes between the circles and out of the near side. Mapes thought about one, pump faking it. May Dishpine uh, give Mapes some space to set it down low for Bryn Johnson who was cutting as Dishpine bit on the pump fake and Johnson's got seven to lead the Farmington shooters and it's a 16 point game, Central 31, Farmington 15. I would think if I was Farmington trying to incorporate Bryn Johnson in this offense a little more if they can, she's got a little bit more physical play and that might play well against this Lady Rebels team. Farmington in the zone defense so that your side Dishpine weaving through like a butter slicing through nice knife, uh, knife slicing through butter that is, to the far side Taylor O'Connor hits that one. Four of five from three. On the near side, it was poked away at another turnover. Briley Palmer and Jimmy Palmer on the far side here. Fifth Farmington turnover at the other end. A layup wouldn't go for Sydney Miles, and she'll shoot two as she was fouled on the shot. And it's the third on Madison Mills. You know, and you look at 2.58 left to go here in the second uh, quarter, and that is a big foul, by the way, on Madison Mills. Very big foul. She's going to have to sit down for a while. But when you look at this, you don't see, you see five turnovers, you think that's not too bad, but they've been some critical turnovers. And every time they fouled Sydney Mills, she has gone to the line and hit it. And Miles is shooting two, she hit the first. Free throws brought to you by Complete Vision Care, voted best day doctor of the Parkland. Six years running, Complete Vision Care, the ideal choice. So Farmington went two for four on their first two trips to the line, haven't missed one since. They're eight of eight after that. Miles has 11, it's 36-15. And Miles is six of six from the free throw line tonight. Mapes in the backcourt with Alyssa O'Connor all over, got it to the head of the arc as she passes it across the timeline to Tucker. Into the near corner for Emily Bauer, right in her face, that's Gracie Populous. Got it inside for Bryn Johnson and a foul called against Sydney Miles. That'll be her second and the team's second. There's a bar right here for those who haven't been to the uh, Farming Tonight's the gym, and there's kind of a bar right in front of the broadcasters. And uh, you, you have a hard time seeing sometimes what's going on. And I was thinking the only person down there was Blair sitting, and she didn't do anything. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you said, no, that was uh, Sydney Miles. And I was like, oh, there she is. And a coaching uh, or a bench warning rather assessed to Aaron Tyree and the Central Lady Rebels. 2.41 to go in the second. 36-15 is the score in Farmington Trails, but they have it underneath. Mapes has to get it in before the five count. On the near side, she gets it to Tucker. Up top now for Bryn Johnson, head of the arc. Johnson fighting through contact by Miles. To the far side, Bauer, the pass was deflected. Give and go back to Johnson at the foul line. Her shot was deflected, and she walks and turns it over. Not happy with it, she just fired that ball back to the central student section. And I, you know, the thing about it is, Farmington's playing uh, basketball here tonight, but I, I think in sometimes when they get a little frustrated, they give up on the play. And when they give up on the play, Central is diving for the loose ball, going after the block shot, whatever they got to do. And that's why right now they're up by 21. 2.20 to go in the second, 36-15. On the near side, this is Alyssa O'Connor. Approaches the arc, no one goes to get her. She'll hoist from there, can't hit that one, though it rattles off three times. Emily Bauer uh, collects a rebound, and she gets it to Aniston Mapes. Out of the backcourt, Mapes between the circles, now to the near side. Mapes trying to reverse the action. Set it up top, Tucker, straight on three. Wow, she got that one. Mackenzie Tucker's got five. That was a nice shot from straight on from Mackenzie Tucker, the freshman, 36-18. Not a bad way to try to start a comeback there, but you can't do it every time. And now LaCava going to force a deflection, but Central's going to get it. Oh, man, Alyssa O'Connor. Check that Taylor O'Connor on the floor. Thought her back end was on the baseline as she collected it. Instead, she threw it off of a night and out of bounds. It'll be Central ball. That's pretty amazing that you could think that fast while you're falling down going out of bounds. Yes. Something I couldn't do. Here's an inbound to Dishbine right inside. Can't hit on that floater, but it rebound is Alyssa O'Connor up top for Taylor from the courthouse. Taylor got it. 
Taylor O'Connor with 15 in the game. All three-point shots made. 90 seconds to go, 39-18 Central. Five out of six from the three-point arc in this first half for Taylor. This is Tucker again on the far side. Picked up her dribble head of the arc, and a foul is called on the reach in going against Alyssa O'Connor. That'll be her second and the team's third. And see, I don't like that foul. And I'll tell you why I don't like that foul. There may have been some contact in there, but there's going to be a little bit of contact. You're going to touch a player. You're going to grab somebody, just hair, barely grab a hold of them, whatever. I don't like it when you call those kind of fouls all the time because what it does is it makes everybody tentative when they play. They don't yeah. want to play defensively hard or offensively hard. That can hurt Farmington as well as they try to get a little physical with Central tonight. Mapes needs to inbound before the five count. Got it up top for Mills. It was knocked away out of her hands off of Alyssa O'Connor and out of bounds. It'll stay with Farmington. I completely agree, Glenn. As, as a broadcaster, I love to see the bully ball play, take it to the cup strong, fight for it down low if you have to. I don't like ticky-tack calls, especially at the high school level. Just let them play. You, you do put your hands on a player once in a while, and that's a five count, yeah. another turnover. And Seven turnovers now for Farmington. I'm surprised Rusty Sosnagro hasn't used another timeout. Yeah, but you do you put your hands on a player once in a while when you're playing defense. When they run across the lane, you'll stick your hand out in front of them. They may run into it. Those kinds of things don't need to be called as fouls because then everybody has their hands down. You don't see that brand of basketball that people like to watch. Alyssa O'Connor. Inbounds to Taylor O'Connor. To the near side, Gracie Populous. Down low for Alyssa O'Connor through the zone defense. Can't hit that one. And a rebound for Shelby Bowling. And she'll get it to the near side for Aniston Mapes. 60 seconds left in half number one. Mapes going to go coast to coast. Trying to get around a defender. Wild shot. That wouldn't fall. That was not the smartest of shot attempts for Aniston Mapes. Nothing she could do there, though. At the other end, Taylor O'Connor. Nice cut in. Righty runner. Got it. Taylor O'Connor's got 17. And it's 41-18 Central. 45 seconds left. Bryn Johnson at the other end receives a pass at the far wing. Probes in, got it to Bowling. She walked and turned it over. I'm looking at Taylor O'Connor's stats here so far tonight. She is six out of nine from the field. One out of three from the uh, inside the arc. She is uh, five out of, or make that, yeah, five out of six from the three-point arc. She is hot tonight. Her sister, on the other hand, not having a great night. She hasn't got a point yet. 41-18. Here's Alyssa O'Connor. Crossing the timeline right up the middle to dribble out some time on the clock. Down to 30 seconds left in the half. And Central could hold for final shot. That's looked like that's what they're going to do. And Farmington's going to let them. Not going to break the zone defense. Alyssa O'Connor. This is the first time we've actually seen a team just dribble across the timeline and just wait things out right in the circle. Yeah, and they're up by 23 right now, so you don't blame them. They're on a play. They get another bucket. They're up by 25, but they need to start right now. Alyssa O'Connor to the foul line. Got it to Miles. That's a walk that wasn't whistled. She can't hit that one. Rebound knocked away. Here's Bowling with two on the clock. Three-quarters court heave by Mapes, and it wouldn't go. At half, it's 41-18. That second quarter in the end of the first, all central. It started out half and half. And Central applied the pressure, and they've been giving Farmington fits. 41-18 at recess. We'll have the car, the uh, Midwest Sports Center halftime report coming up after this on KS. Shop local, buy local, save big deals. It's not every day you can save money. Oh wait, you can. Hi, Jenny here from Big Deals. When you shop Big Deals, you'll save money every day on dozens of gift certificates from local businesses like these. Curtis Glass Center in Park Hills, Good Earth Tech Services in Bonterre, Hubs Pub and Grill in Bonterre and Potosi, the Boulevard Salon and Spa in Farmington. At First State Community Bank, our mission goes beyond banking. We grow stronger communities by helping people and organizations achieve and protect financial success. Our mission is to view each transaction, each hello, each handshake, each meeting and phone call as a way to improve the lives of others. No matter how you define financial success, see our team today and we'll help you achieve it. First State Community Bank. Success starts here. Member FDIC. Online at FSCB.com. Thinking about your next step? Think Middle Area College. We offer small class sizes, transferable credits, and tuition rates less than half of the university. It's affordable, quality education. Apply at mineralarea.edu. Middle Area College. It starts here. We're for the state of Missouri. 
We're for trout fishing, barbecuing, underarching, fountain swimming, road tripping, and show me saying. We're for people who would live here, people who won't, people who farm, and for people who don't. We are Missouri Farm Bureau Insurance, and if you're a Missourian, we're for you. When accidents happen, trust the experts at Griffin Automotive Design. Our dedicated team restores your vehicle to its pre-collision glory with precision and care. Your vehicle deserves the best, so visit us today for a seamless repair experience at 900 Point View Drive in Bon Terre, Missouri. We're more than just a classic car restoration shop. We're also a fully equipped state-of-the-art collision center. So give us a call at 573-534-2300. Trucks, cars, SUVs, whatever you're looking for, we have it here at Lead Belt Auto Sales. Come on by and take a look at our great selection of trucks, cars, SUVs, family vehicles, and sport cars. Worried about financing? You have bad credit, no credit, or even great credit? Visit LeadBeltAutoSales.com to get pre approved today. We have a vehicle for you in any payment range. Just past Mental Area College, and that's Lead Belt Auto Sales on Flat River Road. Struggling with your car but don't have a reliable shop? Wade's Auto Service is a complete maintenance and repair shop in the Parkland area since 2015. Locally owned and operated, Wade's Auto Service wants to be your first choice for all your auto service and repair needs. Plus, they offer a two-year, 24,000-mile part and labor warranty. Trust Wade's Auto Service, 228 East Harrison Street in Farmington, or give them a call at 573-664-1302. Central leads Farmington, and this one started out back and forth. In fact, the team switched leads until Central took over and opened it up. I believe that was at 8-4, to four, and Farmington hasn't been able to get back since. As we take you through the stats, brought to you by Sam Susan Ford Lincoln, as we start the Midwest Sports Center Halftime Report. And starting with the individual stats, Taylor O'Connor leads the way with 17 points. Sydney Miles has 11 points. She's also 6-6 six six from the free throw line. Blair Sitton's got five, Chloe Dishbein has four, Gracie Populous with three, and Alyssa O'Connor with a point. For the farming tonight, Bryn Johnson's got seven, Aniston Mapes has two, Shelby Bowling and Raylan Lacava have two, but it's Mackenzie Tucker off the bench who has five points for the farming tonight. Scoring by quarter, 17-8 in the first, Central 24-10 in the second. Central, they lead 41-18, and Glenberry's got the team numbers. All right, let's start off with the Central Lady Rebels. They are scorching it right now from three-point land and also from the free throw line. Let's start off with field goals though. They're five of 14 inside the arc, seven of 11 outside the arc. That uh, field goal percentage, 36% inside, 64 out, a combined 12 of 25 for 48%. From the free throw line, just about as good as you can get. 10 out of 12, that's 83% for the Central Lady Rebels. For the Farmington Knights, six of 15. They've taken as many shots and they've hit almost as many. In fact, they've hit more than uh, the Farmington Knights have from uh, inside the arc, but the three-pointers is the difference. Two out of six for Farmington from three-point land, that's 33%, a combined eight of 21 for 38%. They didn't shoot a free throw in the entire first half, despite the fact that Central did pick up quite a few fouls on a few of their players. Rebounding, it goes to Farmington, but barely 13 to 12. Turnovers, that goes to Farmington as well, eight to one, and the Central Lady Rebels are outscoring the uh, Farmington Knights off the bench, eight to three. Scoring is 41-18, Central leading Farmington. Stats brought to you by Sam Sism Ford Lincoln, home of the lifetime warranty. Save big on your next car, truck, or SUV. Go online to SismFord.com or call 431 Three one seven seven. We'll take a break in the Midwest Sports Center halftime report. Come back and check the middle area overhead door out of town scoreboard. After this on KFMO Central Leeds Farmington forty one eighteen. Looking for the perfect ride? Doesn't have to be stressful. Ugh. McLean Motors in Farmington is your go-to destination for pre-owned cars, trucks, and Jeeps. McLean Motors has something for everyone from rugged trucks to Jeeps, and McLean Motors offers flexible financing options to fit your budget. Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and Saturdays from 8 to 3. Drive home your dream car today from McLean Motors, located next to Dairy Queen in Farmington, where your journey on the road begins.
video. Jared Pettis and Glenn Berry on this Thursday night from the Black Knight Fieldhouse. Farmington leads, or Farmington Trail Central, 41-18. My apologies. As we take a look at the Mineral Area Overhead Door out of town scoreboard. And we do have some finals already. St. Genevieve beat Potosi 57-47. And on the girls' side as well, Arcadia Valley picked up a big conference win over Kingston 67 to 30. Braylon Turnbow had 30 points and was perfect from the free throw line in that one. Paige Newstead Adams had 19 points in the win as well for Arcadia Valley. Other out of town scores West County is at home against Bismarck, Lesterville at Valley Catholic, and St. Paul plays at Saxony Lutheran. While North County is at home against or check, check that, Frederick County is at home against North County. And boys basketball, Valley Caledonia at Marquand. And after one period of play on B104.3, the St. Louis Blues, Blues lead the New York Rangers 2-1. to one. You, you sit down? I am. I, you, are yeah. you ready for this? I, yeah, I am. They scored a power play goal. Oh, no way! A yeah. power play goal for the Blues! <laughs> they would, were like 0 oh, for the last 20, it's felt like. Yeah. Last in the league. 12 <laughs> goals on their last, I believe it was 136 Attempts. Yep. On they a power, power play. play goal. Jordan Cairo has both goals in the game so far. Out of town scoreboard brought to you by Mineral Area Overhead Door at 1020 Woodlawn Drive, just north of Farmington, installing garage doors, awnings, and patio covers, windows, fencing, and more. For a full list of services, visit mineralareador.com. That'll wrap things up on the Midwest Sports Center halftime report. When we come back, third quarter action. The Lady Rebels leading the. Maple Street Resale in Farmington is a one-stop shop to help you save money. It's a store full of yesterday's treasures and unique and hard-to-find items. Maple Street Resale has local vendors that stock the shelves with toys, clothes, shoes, and other treasures. Oh, and did I forget to mention, there's a Bath & Body Works vendor as well. Stop by and see their wide selection today. Maple Street Resale, open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 till 6 p.m., and Sunday, 11 to 4, at 712 Maple Street in Farmington. To everyone who's hungry for something special. Culver's is the place for us. Hi, what can I make fresh for you today? It's nice being greeted by people who are glad to see you. And I appreciate that they use real ingredients like fresh beef and Wisconsin cheese. The frozen custard is so fresh and creamy, it tastes like it was made just for us. It's our pleasure. Just spending time with family, that's what mealtime at Culver's is all about. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome, Welcome to Delicious! delicious. Shop local, buy local, save big deals. It's not every day you can save money. Oh, wait, you can. Hi, Jenny here from Big Deals. When you shop Big Deals, you'll save money every day on dozens of gift certificates from local businesses like these. Colton Steakhouse, Paw Fiction Pet Grooming, Charlie's Mowing Service and Snow Removal, and the Oasis Christian Bookstore and Gifts. They're all part of our Big Deals. Shop local, buy local, save big deals. It's not every day you can save money. Oh, wait, you can. Hi, Jenny here from Big Deals. When you shop Big Deals, you'll save money every day on dozens of gift certificates from local businesses like these. Curtis Glass Center in Park Hills, Good Earth Tech Services in Bonterre, Hobbs Pub and Grill in Bonterre and Potosi, the Boulevard Salon and Spa in Farmington. At First State Community Bank, our mission goes beyond banking. We grow stronger communities by helping people and organizations achieve and protect financial success. Our mission is to view each transaction, each hello, each handshake, each meeting and phone call as a way to improve the lives of others. No matter how you define financial success, see our team today and we'll help you achieve it. First State Community Bank, success starts here. Member FDIC, online at fscb.com. Second half underway, and it starts with Central getting first possession. Taylor O'Connor misses a three from the far side, goes out of bounds, and Farmington will inbound in the baseline in the backcourt with full court pressure still from the Central Lady Rebels. That's almost like uh, saying the Blues got a power play goal. Everybody needs to sit down. Taylor O'Connor missed a three-pointer. 41-18 Central leads. 20 seconds into quarter number three, and a Farmington turnover as Shelby Bowling couldn't hold on to the bullet pass, and it's coming out of the backcourt with Taylor O'Connor. Now to the near side for Alyssa O'Connor. Gets it to Sydney Miles. Miles to the far side. This is Taylor. Taylor O'Connor to the near side again for Sydney Miles. They play catch of the wings into the corner for Alyssa O'Connor. She's got one point tonight. Corner to corner pass for Taylor O'Connor to the foul line, Courtney Dorch. She'll dribble out on perimeter, pro back in, pass knocked away. Aniston Mapes got it. 
Out of the backcourt, this is Mapes on the near side. She takes it on the wing. Bounce it up top for in Johnson. Pump fake, dish fine, disrupts the shot. And Johnson has to go to Mapes on the near side. Seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Mapes through a screen set by LaCava. Deep two. This is a 15-footer wouldn't go and an over-the-back call coming against Shelby Bowling. That'll be her third and the team's first, and that's a foul you can't take. Yeah, that's one of those fouls. Whenever you do it, you're thinking, okay, I think I can reach up over the top and get it without touching anybody, but Central is so good at blocking out, and that's exactly what happened. The Central player just blocked her out, so she had to jump over the top, and she committed the foul. 41-18 is still the score. No scoring yet in this third quarter. As Miles sends it inside for Dishbine, and there's the first bucket as Dishbine lays it in underneath on the near post. Boy, Dishbine's got uh, six points right now, and she hasn't been really active in this game. A couple of fouls so far as well. If she gets going, this could be a really long night for Farmington. Mapes out of the backcourt through a screen. Mapes to the far wing. Mapes going to probe in, lob it down low for Bowling. Pump fake, put it off glass and in. That's a good play by Shelby Bowling. She's got her second field goal tonight. And I think that's what Farmington has to do. Get the ball down low, dish it off, get the uh, height to their advantage. Right now, especially with Blair Sitton's not in the game. A 23-point game, 43-20. to 20. Lefty runner wouldn't fall for Alyssa O'Connor, and Bryn Johnson has the rebound. She'll hand it to Aniston Mapes. Mapes with her eyes up the floor as she comes out of the backcourt. On the far side of the logo, get it ahead of the arc for LaCovin out of the near wing for Bryn Johnson. 5.53 to go in quarter number three up top for Madison Mills. I think Farmington needs to knock down a three here. Johnson got a probe in. Righty runner goes for Johnson. They'll take that too. Bryn Johnson's got nine. Now you need to stop at the other end. 43-22 Central leads. Yeah, they got to get some good shots. They got to get them down. They got to get on defense. They got to play some uh, good catch-up ball here. They can't score all these points at once, so they got to take it a little at a time, try to get a goal of maybe getting back within 10 or so by the end of this quarter. Miles misses on a three from the near wing. Dorch with an offensive rebound. Got it to Taylor O'Connor with a 15-footer. She made it. She's got 19, and it's 45-22. Quick outlet the other way. Bryn Johnson off glass and hits with the layup. 11 for Johnson, 45-24, 5.14 to go. Farmington staying with Central in this half as jo uh, Mills rather will knock that one away and out of bounds. That's what you need if you're Farmington. You need a couple of stops and some big threes, and Farmington can get that. They just need to get those stops first. Yeah, they got to do that because they, they can't trade baskets at this point. If they do, they're going to lose this game by quite a lot. Miles to Dishbine. 15-footer from Dishbine. Won't get that one to go. LaCava knocks the rebound away, but can't chase it down. Out of bounds off Central. Uh, check that Farmington. It'll stay with Central. I think Chloe Dishbine just thought about it too long. She caught it, thought, this is a good shot, and then she thought again, and then she finally put it up. And that time, the rim didn't help her out. We've seen some threes that have rolled around, bounced up and down, and went in, but that time, that two wouldn't go down. Taylor O'Connor on the near side wants another from the land of plenty. Can't hit that one. The rebound knocked away, and again, Farmington can't get to it. And Bryn Johnson gets arms on it as Taylor O'Connor collected the rebound, and the arrow does favor the Knights, so they will get possession. Yeah, Taylor's come out a little bit cold after the halftime uh, break there. She's going to heat it up, I'm sure, before this night is over again. But right now, she is uh, one out of three from the field in this uh, second half. Mapes across the timeline, sets up the offense. To the elbow on the near side, LaCava down low, Bowling, 10-footer, got it. Nice play by Shelby Bowling. She's got six, and uh, scoring inside 20 points. It's a 19-point differential. Yeah, you were down by 23 and a half. Now you're down to 19. What you don't need is to let Central come back out here, score a couple of buckets, see if you can make a stop. Straight on three, Alyssa O'Connor wouldn't go. An offensive rebound dish fine. She'll go with the putback. Can't hit that one. LaCava had it and lost it. Send it back out. Alyssa o Taylor O'Connor as Alyssa got the rebound. Taylor O'Connor in. Wild shot wouldn't fall. Wanted a foul, didn't get it. And the rebound for Bowling turned it over, and then laying that one in is Mills. Well, LaCava and Bowling were both there. I didn't think either of them were going to collect the rebound. They handed it off to Mapes, who was covered. At the other end, a shot by Mills wouldn't fall, and she's fouled. And I think, again, the whole idea of this... Uh, Farmington Knight team right now. They're not going after the loose balls quickly. We saw a turnover down here at the other end where the ball was rolling out of bounds. Nobody from Farmington went after it. Two free throws at the Complete Vision Care line to our right. It's Madison Mills. Her first one is good. Mills with the first point. Free throws brought to you by Complete Vision Care, the ideal choice for your medical eye care concerns, including dry eyes and other eye diseases. Locations in Lennington and Festus back to a 20-point game, 47-27. Second free throw for Mills at the line to our right. Teams have switched sides. It's now central right to left, and you're listening to Vice. Second one misses. Taylor O'Connor's got the rebound, and she gets to Alyssa O'Connor. That's six rebounds for Taylor tonight. 
Lob down low, Sitton couldn't collect it, and it's a turnover as Farmington takes over, and Mackenzie Tucker steals it. The second turnover for Central. At the other end of three from Mapes. Check that Bryn Johnson, and she got it. 14 for Bryn Johnson, and it's a 17-point game, 47-30. Don't want to cause the broadcaster jinx, but right now Bryn Johnson has not missed a shot all night long, whether it's inside or outside the arc. Better knock on wood, Glenn. <laughs> Down low, Blair sitting underneath, can't hit, or hits that one either, can't be stopped when she towers over the defenders. 3.20 to go in the third. Here's... Mapes, coast to coast, bounce it down low. Bowling off glass and in. Bowling's had a really strong start to this second half. 3-10 to go in the third, 49-32. And this is what Farmington needed to be doing in the first half, and I think they got away from it. They started trying to do too much, trying to fire up shots from behind the back and all that kind of stuff, and they just need to play some patient basketball, get it down low, get some open shots. Taylor O'Connor to Alyssa O'Connor at the near elbow. Swing it out. Gracie Populous. Pump fake from perimeter. She'll probe in. Ten footer with the righty float. Can't get that one. And the rebound collected by Mackenzie Tucker. She'll get it to Mapes who had something in her hand and had to throw it out of bounds. Mills step back in the corner. Mills now to the foul line. Mills head of the arc. Set it to the near side for Tucker. Into the corner Bryn Johnson. Need a three here if you're Farmington, but you'll take two. Lob it to the far side, Bowling. Back out, Mapes. Pump fake from the far side in the corner. Forced back out and got it to the near wing for Madison Mills. 2.22 to go in the third. Mills through the key to the corner, far side, Tucker. She backs up on it. Now she'll dribble in, met by Dishbein. Spin move down low, foul is called. It'll be on the floor before the shot. And so Farmington will inbound on the baseline, and the foul on Central is going against Gracie Populous, her first and the team's first. I was going to say, if that goes against Chloe Dishbein, that'll be her third, and that would be a little bit of a probably aggravating foul for both the coach and the player, but it didn't. It went on Populous instead. Mapes will inbound on the baseline, left of the lane to our right, 2.14 to go in the third. It's a 49-32 game in central leads, but Farmington will inbound. So you've got it down to 17 points right now. you got to get it down to 15, maybe even 14 on this possession, and then start looking towards the 10-point mark by the time you get to the end of the third quarter. Mills nearly walks. She'll bounce it to the near side. Bryn Johnson is there. Johnson on perimeter. Johnson into the foul line. Her shot was knocked away. One at a foul, didn't get it. Says how to the official. On the near side, Sydney Miles at the other end. Dishbine in the near corner. Dishbine to the far side. Populous pump fake from the lane to Plenty. She gets to the foul line and had it knocked out of her hands. And a foul called on Bryn Johnson, her third, and the team's second. And that Bryn Johnson on that play, honestly, that was a blocked shot. And she's frustrated because it was blocked. It was a shot that she thought she had an easy time of, but it got blocked. And down here in the other end, I think she's just a little exhausted and a little frustrated. She commits the foul. Mackenzie Tucker and Emily Bauer back into the game. Far side, Gracie Populous. Interior feed at the foul line. Alyssa O'Connor, no one going to defend her as she takes a shot there. There were three around her, and they let her take it. She couldn't hit. Tucker has the rebound. At the other end, Emily Bauer. Now to Mapes, way out. Mapes at the logo with a minute 33 to go in quarter number three, trailing by 17. Mapes head of the arc. Mapes back to the near side. Mapes goes back to the far side. Try to get it out for Tucker as she cut back. Instead, Dishbein steals, extends the step, and lays it in. Dishbein has got eight, and it's 51-32. Definitely not what you needed if you're Farmington. Now At you the other end, bowling, pull-up jumper from 10 feet out. Can't hit that. And Dishbein came all the way back, 80 feet, to get that rebound. First time bowling's missed in this second half. Far side, that's Populous, a minute 03 to go. Send it down low for Alyssa O'Connor on the near side at the block. Cutting to the cup, that's Populous. Righty runner off glass, it falls out. And the rebound is collected by Mackenzie Tucker. And she'll come out of the backcourt and get it to Aniston Mapes. Now to Bowling, that's a walk, and that'll be a turnover. Oh, they call the, no, they call the walk. All three officials have their hands up. And it'll be another Farmington turnover. Well, you came into this quarter down 23. You got to get a defensive stop right here. If uh, Central plays for the last shot and gets that last shot, you're going to leave the quarter down 21, and that's not what you wanted. You had a little bit of momentum going with Farmington, and it just kind of disappeared after a while. And uh, let's see what Central does as far as the clock goes with 40 seconds left. Sydney Miles wants one from the near corner, drained it. Miles with her second three-point shot made tonight. She's got 16, and it's 54-32, and the lead is balloon back to 22 at the other end this is Mapes she'll lob it can't hit that one offensive rebound though for Johnson players collide check that the rebound is collected by Charlotte Burke who's into the game 
And we go held ball, and the arrow favors the Central Lady Rebels. 19.9 to go in the third, 54-32 Central. Now, like I said, you were down 23, you're down 22 now. You had some momentum going there for a while. It's kind of disappeared, and uh, the idea was, could you get it back to 10? But right now, they may go back into uh, the fourth quarter, trailing by more than they did at halftime. 11 seconds left in the third, Glenn. I got a score for you that might surprise you on the out of town scoreboard. Taylor O'Connor from the near side. That three wouldn't fall. An offensive rebound. Dorch to the cup. Put it off glass. No good. Another offensive rebound. Dishbein with the foul at point eight on the clock. She makes it 54 32 in the end. One to follow. 56 32, rather, as they add that score onto the board late. And the foul is on McKenzie Tucker. And one for Dishbein. And it's a 25-point game. She's got 11. Inbound. Clock's not running. That shot shouldn't have counted. They will count it anyways, and Mapes missed the full-court shot. 57-32 after three. We'll be back right after this with that out-of-town scoreboard check on KFMO. We're for the state of Missouri. We're for trout fishing, barbecuing, underarching, fountain swimming, road tripping, and show me saying. We're for people who would live here, people who won't, people who farm, and for people who don't. We are Missouri Farm Bureau Insurance, and if you're a Missourian, we're for you. When accidents happen, trust the experts at Griffin Automotive Design. Our dedicated team restores your vehicle to its pre-collision glory with precision and care. Your vehicle deserves the best, so visit us today for a seamless repair experience at 900 Point View Drive in Bonterre, Missouri. We're more than just a classic car restoration shop. We're also a fully equipped state-of-the-art collision center. So give us a call at 573-534-2300. in Farmington, Midwest Sports Center, and by Mineral Area Overhead Door in Farmington. Quarter break brought to you by Missouri Farm Bureau agent Mike Sonsagraw on St. Genevieve Avenue in Farmington and Mike and uh, Jonathan Steffen, rather, on uh, North State Street in Deloge. Contact them today for a free quote on auto, home, business, or life insurance. Out of town scoreboard, Chuck Glenn, I told you this might surprise you. North County leads Fredericktown at halftime, 42-18. Wow. Is that game at Fredericktown? It is. Wow. Somebody is just not... Uh not hitting tonight, and somebody's playing some really good ball. Turnover by Farmington as Alyssa O'Connor steals it. It's the fifth by Farmington in this half. Taylor O'Connor missed. An offensive rebound for Alyssa O'Connor, and Anissa Mapes strips it away. Out-of-town scoreboard check brought to you by Mineral Area Overhead Door at 1020 Woodlawn Drive just north of Farmington. Installing entry and storm doors, decks and railing, theme central vacuum systems, and more for a full list of services. Visit mineralareador.com. Taylor O'Connor catch and shoot three. Far side wouldn't go. She's fouled. She'll shoot three. That's what you don't need if you're Farmington. Uh, they just have not had anything working for them tonight. Early on, it looked like LaCava would have a big time night. She scored four points on her uh, first four shots. And uh, since then, she hasn't scored. She's pulled down four rebounds. Three of the first uh, four rebounds that she got came on the first three rebounds of the game. They have shut her down since then. And then you had foul trouble on bowling as the first free throw was no good. Second free throw at the complete vision care line to our left. Or check that. That was the first one that didn't fall. You saw into the future. Oh, no. Check that. She's shooting three. Yeah. My apologies. <laughs> it's my first day, Glenn. The third free throw. She makes that one. That's something you don't often see her do is just keep missing free throws. But she's got a little colder here in this second half. She was red hot in that first half. 58-32, 7.36 to go. Central leads. On the near side, Bryn Johnson up top for Madison Mills. Back out for Johnson, probe it in. Bounce it up top for Tucker between the circles. Tucker to the near side, trying to find around Dishbine. The shot is not going to count. It's on the floor. The foul will be on Dishbine. That'll be her third. Not much contact there, but the whistle is blown. The first on Central, the third on Dishbine. That is, that's good news for Central because she got two fouls in that first quarter, and you were like, okay, that's not good. But uh, she's been able to play some pretty good ball here tonight, do some defensive things and offensive things without committing more fouls. Shot missed by Farmington. That was taken by or the rebound for Dorch. Rather, the shot missed. I missed who it was on. I believe it might have been Mapes with 7.09 to go. On the near side, Taylor O'Connor. Sent it down low for Dishbine, but it was knocked away by the zone defense from F Farmington. And it's the Mapes in the backcourt as the Central Lady Rebels pull off the full court pressure. Mills on the far side. Bounce it up top for Mapes. Nearly had it stolen. Mapes into the logo through the circle. 6.45 to go in the game. Mapes backs off. 
Mapes on the near side. Alyssa O'Connor stays with her as she gets it to Mills. And now for Johnson. Send it to the far wing for Tucker. Dribble drive in, met by a defender. Back out for Mapes. Between the circles, six and a half to go in the fourth. This might be the longest possession of the night for Farmington. And it comes with them trailing 58-32. Mapes has it poked away from behind, but a reach and foul called on Alyssa O'Connor. That'll be her third. Yeah, I don't like that one either because that, that ball was poked away. I don't think she actually touched anybody. And uh, again, you don't want to see that kind of stuff. That ball goes poked away. It maybe leads to a little action. Instead, everybody stops. You throw it inbounds. 6.22 to go, still 58-32 Central. Mapes lobs it to the near side for Mills. Catch and shoot three, can't get that one at short. And the rebound for Taylor O'Connor. Well, this might just be one of those, a product of one of those games where it's a young, it's a team for Farmington that's got a lot of seniors that don't have a lot of playing time on the varsity level. And Central's got nearly their whole team from last year that went to the Final Four. Lob inside by Populous. Madison Mills read that one and took it away. She'll hand it off to Aniston Mapes. Mapes to the far side, four mills down low for bowling. Can't hit, got her own rebound, put back through contact, doesn't get it to fall either. Dishbein was there for the board. And you look at Aniston Mapes, she was a member of that team that went to the Final Four last year. As Dishbein pulls up from the foul line and can't hit it. And LaCava knocks the rebound away to Mapes. Mapes at the other end, coast to coast. Back out on perimeter. Mapes, righty runner, that'll be an offensive. Oh no, a blocking foul is called. Two free throws coming from Mapes. Looks like Courtney Dorch down there, I believe, took that uh, block and she Looked around, thought she was going to get the uh, offensive foul as well, but they're going to call it on Central. And I think when you look at this game, a couple of things stands out about it. Is The first thing is is the energy level that was so high at the beginning of this game is not existent right now. I, that we're talking fans, we're talking you know players, everybody. This Central team is just taking the air out of this building tonight. First free throw goes down. And then the other part of it is, I think Farmington, after that energy level started to drop, they just kind of, you know, haven't been, they haven't been going after the loose balls. They haven't been chasing things down. I think Rusty Sanchegra will talk to him about that. Five minutes, or five and a half minutes left in the fourth. It's 58-34 as Mapes hits them both from the complete vision care foul line. On the near side, Taylor O'Connor lobs it down low for Dishbine, but she'll walk and turn it over. Five turnovers in this half for Central. First time that they've uh, really had more than one or two turnovers at a time. They just have had a couple of, uh, Glitches here in the second half. Mapes will work her way up the floor. This that third quarter and second quarter, especially all central. Farmington played really well the first three minutes of this game. Here's LaCava, deep two. That one wouldn't fall for Farmington and the rebound for Alyssa O'Connor. And we had mentioned it, Glenn, when Central applies that full court pressure, they seem unstoppable. Alyssa O'Connor from the far wing. She will hit that one. It rattles home. Alyssa O'Connor's got her first field goal tonight. She's got four points in the game. You know that uh, Taylor's going to give it to her no matter what when she gets home tonight. How many points did you score, Alyssa? That kind of <laughs> thing. But uh, it's good to see her get on the board. Here's Alyssa O'Connor. Now to Taylor on the near side. Four and a half to go in the fourth. 61-34. And if Central hits a three on this trip, it induces running clock. I would have never thought that, especially coming into this game. But also, like you said, in the first three minutes, I thought Central was really going to have their hands tied here tonight, or hands full, rather, and uh, it's not been the case. Taylor O'Connor, far side, can't get it. Blair Sitton fights for the rebound. Farmington touches it. Ooh, I thought it went off of LaCava last. They say it's off of Blair Sitton and out of bounds. So it'll be Farmington ball, trailing by 28. I like the way Aaron Tyree uses Blair Sitton in games like this. I mean, she has not been out there all night, despite the fact that she's about shoulder and head above everybody else out there on the floor. He's put her in games and in, in parts of the game where he felt like he needed her presence, pulled her back out at other times and so they could run that fast break. 61-34, that's a 27-point differential halfway through this final stanza. Burke to the near side, Tucker near side three from the corner, can't get that one. LaCava lost the rebound and Dishbein's got it. Dishbein coming out of the backcourt on the far side. Send it down low for Alyssa O'Connor underneath and she'll lay it in, she's got six. And so it'll be Mapes out of the backcourt again. 63-34, three near side, Bryn Johnson. Can't get that one. And the rebound again for Dishbein. That's the first miss for Bryn Johnson, isn't it? Yeah, that's the first miss of any kind tonight for Bryn Johnson. She did have a shot blocked earlier in the game, though. On the near side, Dishbein hits the three, and that'll induce running clock, make it 66-34. Dishbein's got 14. 
Well, you know this Central Lady uh, Rebels ball club is good. They've got a lot of talent. They play defense well. I am so impressed with their rebounding. And Farmington tonight just, I think, got out of their game and didn't play the kind of game that Farmington can, and Central took full advantage of it. Alyssa O'Connor will commit her fourth foul and the fourth foul on Central, and we'll have a whole host of substitutions coming in for the Lady Rebels. They'll bring in Mia Manguez, Avery Boyer, Alex Neff, and Morgan Populus, and staying out on the floor, Gracie Populus. Nope, check that, she comes off the floor. The fifth player coming in is Ella McClanahan. Well, by the time you read that score, the clock may run out. <laughs> 2.30 to go in the fourth as we await the inbound. 66-34 is the score. Burt going to probe in with the right-handed shot. It doesn't fall, but she's fouled, and she will shoot two. Charlotte Burt gets two, and the foul is the fifth on Central, so Farmington in the bonus, and it's the first on Morgan Populus, the freshman. Blues picked up another goal. This time it's uh, Brendan Saad. Hey. And they're up 3-1 in the second. You hear that on B104.3 at the conclusion of our game? First free throw good for Burt. She's got her first point at 66-35 with two minutes to go in the fourth and ticking. Second free throw at the complete Vision Care line to our right. She makes that one. Burke and them both. It's a 30-point game, 66-36, a minute 50 to go in the fourth. So what do you do if you're Farmington? Where do you go from here? I think you probably just have to go back to the drawing board and say, hey, we need to play our game next time we play, whether it's Central or anybody. We need to do what we're capable of doing. Ooh, where's a poke and a takeaway? It stays in bounds and running right into the table. That was J.C. Jarvis. Central going to take it back, though, as Mia Mangas went all the way back to get it. Larry Joseph down there at the PA table nearly got bowled over. Avery Boyer back out. For Morgan Populous, a minute 19 to go. This is a deep two that missed everything from Mangas and out of bounds. Farmington will inbound with the clock ticking down from a minute 15, now down to a minute 10. Well, good thing the mic still works down there for yeah. Larry, the PA guy here at Farmington. Larry had to get out of the way. He had to uh, move over into the next seat almost. <laughs> 56 seconds to go in regulation. It's a 30-point game to the far side. Burke got it at the wing, probing on the along the baseline. Picked up her dribble, sent it back out as she gets it to Kate Jinkerson, who's in for Farmington. Back to Burke, far side. Swing it to the near side this time, Ella Scott. She'll push forward, then send it back out for Kate Jinkerson. 39 seconds on the clock, Burke for three far side. That wouldn't fall, rebound loose. Jinkerson gonna chase it, it's gonna go out of bounds, and it'll be central ball with 30 seconds to go. All they have to do is inbound, and that'll likely do it. Yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for the Central Lady Rebels and the Farmington Knights here tonight. I think this is a surprising result considering how good both of these teams are, but Central, just had it tonight, Farmington did not. Mangas across the timeline, she'll get it to the far side for Morgan Populous, hold her above her head, 15 seconds left. Farmington defense not even gonna come out and pressure and that'll do it with 10 seconds. Mangas just gonna hold it. 66-36 the final as the Central Faithful arise to their feet and applaud their team as they go 2-0 in the conference and now 10-2 on the season. Bill Best, American Family Insurance post game show coming up after this. At First State Community Bank, our mission goes beyond banking. We grow stronger communities by helping people and organizations achieve and protect financial success. Our mission is to view each transaction, each hello, each handshake, each meeting and phone call as a way to improve the lives of others. No matter how you define financial success, see our team today and we'll help you achieve it. First State Community Bank, success starts here. Member FDIC, online at fscb.com. Thinking about your next step? Think Middle Area College. We offer small class sizes, transferable credits, and tuition rates less than half of the university. It's affordable, quality education. Apply at mineralarea.edu. Middle Area College. It starts here. We're for the state of Missouri. We're for trout fishing, barbecuing, underarching, fountain swimming, road tripping, and show me saying. We're for people who would live here, people who won't, people who farm, and for people who don't. We are Missouri Farm Bureau Insurance, and if you're a Missourian, we're for you. Trucks, cars, SUVs, whatever you're looking for, we have it here at Lead Belt Auto Sales. Come on by and take a look at our great selection of trucks, cars, SUVs, family vehicles, and sport cars. Worried about financing? You have bad credit, no credit, or even great credit? Visit LeadBeltAutoSales.com to get pre-approved today. We have a vehicle for you in any payment range. Just past Mental Area College, and that's Lead Belt Auto Sales on Flat River Road. 
never too early to start crunching those numbers, downloading those forms, and organizing all those receipts you put in your shoebox. Getting frustrated yet? Yeah. Try crunching this number, 573-546-3104. Accountant Stephanie Kitchell with Kitchell Accounting and Tax Service in Ironton. Stephanie is available year-round for tax and business consulting, accounting, and bookkeeping, and payroll. Crunch that number one more time, 573-546-3104. A trusted name in the Arcadia Valley area, Stephanie Kitchell with Kitchell Accounting and Tax Service in Ironton. Looking for the perfect ride? Doesn't have to be stressful. Ugh. McLean Motors in Farmington is your go-to destination for pre-owned cars, trucks, and Jeeps. McLean Motors has something for everyone from rugged trucks to Jeeps, and McLean Motors offers flexible financing options to fit your budget. Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and Saturdays from 8 to 3. Drive home your dream car today from McLean Motors, located next to Dairy Queen in Farmington, where your journey on the road begins. Maple Street Resale in Farmington is a one-stop shop to help you save money. It's a store full of yesterday's treasures and unique and hard-to-find items. Maple Street Resale has local vendors that stock the shelves with toys, clothes, shoes, and other treasures. Oh, and did I forget to mention, there's a Bath & Body Works vendor as well. Stop by and see their wide selection today. Maple Street Resale, open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 till 6 p.m., and Sunday, 11 to 4, at 712 Maple Street in Farmington. To everyone who's hungry for something special. Culver's is the place for us. Hi, what can I make fresh for you today? It's nice being greeted by people who are glad to see you. And I appreciate that they use real ingredients like fresh beef and Wisconsin cheese. The frozen custard is so fresh and creamy, it tastes like it was made just for us. It's our pleasure. Just spending time with family, that's what mealtime at Culver's is all about. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome, Welcome to Delicious! delicious. Six thirty-six, putting up a 30 spot on the Farmington Knights. As we take you a look at some of the final game stats, courtesy of Sam Says and Ford Lincoln, hopefully hear from the coaches and hand out some free pizza on the Bill Bass American Family Insurance post-game show. We'll start it with the Central Lady Rebels and their leading scorer, Taylor O'Connor, 20 points with seven rebounds. And it's 16 from Sydney Miles. She was a perfect six of six from the free throw line. Chloe Dishbein adds 14, a really strong second half for Chloe Dishbein. Seven points for Blair Sitton, just six for Alyssa O'Connor, and three for Gracie Populous. For the Farmington Knights, their leading scorer is Bryn Johnson with 14. Shelby Bowling's got eight. They get five from Mackenzie Tucker, four from Aniston Mapes, two from Charlotte Burke and Raylan LaCava, and a point for Madison Mills. Final score in this one, 66-36. Glenn Berry's got the team numbers. All right, team numbers are things that are going to stand out. Uh, it's going to stand out to you. First of all, number of free throws shot by Central and number made, and number of three pointers shot by Central and number made. Now let's go to the overall stats. 12 of 28 for Central inside the arc. That's 43%. 10 of 19 from the three-point line. That is 53%. That's 30 points right there for the Central Lady Rebels. And this game ended like 31-point differential or something like that. Or actually, 30-point differential. So there's your difference in the game right now. 12 of 16 from the free-throw line, 75%. Remember, 16 free throws for the uh, Lady Rebels. For the um, Farmington Knights, 11 of 24 from inside the arc, 3 of 13 from outside the arc, that's 23%. Overall, 14 of 37 to 38%. They were 5 of 5 from the free throw line. They only got 5 free throw chances in this entire game. That's 100%. Couldn't do much better than that, but not much opportunity. Rebounding goes to the Central Lady Rebels, 26-21. You wouldn't thought that early on in the game. And turnovers go to Farmington. They had 13 overall, although they did cut back on the turnovers at the end of the game. And uh, these Central Lady Rebels only had Five. And I think we're going to be joined by one of the coaches here in just a minute or two as we get ready for the uh, post-game show. And it looks like we have a couple in the area I I anyway. Yep, we do have a couple <laughs> coaches in the area. We'll see who gets here first. Those stats brought to you by Sam Sism Ford Lincoln, home of the lifetime warranty. Save big on your next car, truck, or SUV. Go online to SismFord.com or call 431-3177. We'll take a break, come back, and hear from one of the coaches, Aaron Tyree making his way up here. And uh, Rusty Sonsagross standing next to us. Who gets here first? We'll find out after this break. 
You work hard to make sure your Straight family has everything you need. Life insurance here. from okay. American Family Life Insurance Company can help financially protect your loved ones by replacing a portion of your income if you were to pass away. That means your family will have the help they need to maintain their quality of life and pursue their dreams. Get the peace yeah, of mind you deserve by protecting what matters most. American Family Insurance. See Bill Betts on East Main Street in Park Hills or call 573-431-4893. American Family Life Insurance Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Back here at Farmington where the Farmington uh, Knights fall to the Central Lady Rebels. Final score of 66-36. We're going to be joined by head coach Aaron Tyree of the Central Lady Rebels. And coach, what a game played by your girls tonight. I mean, you can point to Alyssa O'Connor. You can point to uh, several of the players just getting the job done tonight. And, and even that, I don't think we expected a 30-point win tonight, did you? Uh, no, you know, we knew they were a good team. They are a quality team and that uh, we'd have our hands full for sure. I thought our girls played really hard on the defensive end. And, uh, you know, they played with Aniston. They've played against these girls for a long time, so they know their tendencies. And I felt like we were really re really prepared for what they were going to do, and our girls executed the game plan excellently. I think every time we watch you guys play, I, I, it just looks like to me your defense is so stifling against teams. They just shut people down. They get people to a point where they don't do much. LaCava tonight, first couple of possessions down she's got four points she's got three rebounds she finished with four points and four rebounds you guys did a great job on her and everybody else defensively yeah I thought so too um, you know and we talked early in uh, the game and maybe early in a timeout in the first quarter or maybe it was the quarter I don't know but we talked about you know giving up offensive rebounds and reiterated to the girls and I thought they did an excellent job after that do we do we talk to Josh Mapes and give him credit or do you we give you credit but the one thing that impresses me about your team that maybe other people don't notice is rebounding is the fact that you guys do so well at positioning yourself to get the rebounds and even though I think Farmington had the height on you tonight you got the rebound edge yeah I think all the credit's got to go to our girls I mean obviously you know we learned from coach Mapes and I learned from coach Mapes so he's got to get some of the credit but uh, our girls got to go out there and still execute and they play really hard and I you know we tell them all the time rebounding is all about effort it doesn't matter how big you are if you're you know if you're tough enough and giving good effort you can rebound First three minutes of this game, pretty close game. Everything seemed to be going really well for both teams. And then Taylor O'Connor caught fire, hitting uh, five out of six threes in that first half. And then you got one from uh, Gracie Populous, I think it was, and then Sidney Miles nailed one. And it, that just pushed the game out of reach. How much of the three-point game is your game for Central? We got a lot of girls that can make shots, you know. I mean, we got girls that can play and take the ball to the basket, and it just opens up the three-point game for us. And we feel very confident with a lot of – of our girls with the ball in their hands, three-point line, if their feet are set, it's a green light. And uh, our girls have proven why in the last few games. We've made a lot of shots, you know, from the perimeter. And that's why it's so impressive you rebound so well because you're shooting way out here and then the O'Connor twins or somebody is down low and uh, getting those rebounds. I thought Blair Sitton, for the time she played tonight, she pretty much dominated at times or at least found herself in spots where she could get the ball and get it up and get it in real quick. Absolutely. You know, we've been working with Blair on that of, positioning herself where she can get easy boards and then honestly they turn into easy baskets for her being so tall so um i thought she did a good job of you know taking our coaching from this you know past few weeks and turning that into what she can do on the floor now i know when farmington looks at this game tonight this is a game they'd like to play over they'd like to get a chance to do it i'm sure at some point in the m triple a conference tournament or somewhere along the line you're going to meet up again I don't think we'll see the same game. What do you think they're thinking right now about this game and how they're going to approach it next time? Oh, I'm sure they're wanting a rematch. You know what I mean? I, I know that the score is probably a little uh, one-sided more than it should have been, but it's because our girls played really hard and they deserve all the credit. Farmington's a good team, and I know if we played them again, it wouldn't probably be like this. But our girls came ready, and they were, uh, you know, they were excited for this game, and I thought we executed. All right, so now you've uh, got Farmington out of the way. Now you get Dexter. They're coming up next. What do you know about Dexter? Dexter, you know, I try not to work too far ahead. I know I've said that before, but uh, after getting everything ready for Farmington a couple days ago, I started watching a little bit. Luckily, Coach Daniels helps out with the film, and, you know, they're going to run a 2-2-1 two, two, back to uh, matchup 2-3, which can always, you know, always gives us fits. But we got basketball players, so hopefully, you know, that kind of evens the playing field. 
does a coach even look at a score like the fact that Farmington beat Dexter 81-57? Do you even look at that, or do you even think about it? Or is that kind of a dangerous thing to do? Say, hey, they beat them 81-57, we beat them at 30. Is that a little dangerous to tell the kids or, or something like that? Uh, definitely. I think you got to fight that because I know the girls are looking at scores, you know, and things like that, and they think that it's going to be a walk in the park, and you got to still show up and play every day and prepare like it's, you know, your last game. And, like, you could – I mean, honestly, you can lose every game. So, you know, we got to prepare like it's a – like we do every game, and I think our girls will be ready come Saturday. I think your girls were very well prepared. That's a credit to you and your coaching staff, and I think also to the senior leadership, some of the uh, seniors you got, like Chloe Dishpine and Courtney Dorch, and uh, even the three juniors that are out there tonight. Uh, great team you've got going for you right now, and uh, go, uh, Coach, we want to say congratulations on a big win here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank All right. you guys for the coverage. That is Coach Aaron Tyree, his first-year head coach of the Central Lady Rebels. They won it tonight 66-36. Going to take a timeout when we come back. Hopefully talk it over with Rusty Sanchegraw up next. Shop local, buy local, save big deals. It's not every day you can save money. Oh, wait, you can. Hi, Jenny here from Big Deals. When you shop Big Deals, you'll save money every day on dozens of gift certificates from local businesses like these. Colton Steakhouse, Paw Affection Pet Grooming, Charlie's Mowing Service, and Snow Removal, and the Oasis Christian Bookstore and Gifts. They're all part of our Big Deals. Central Graw of the uh, Farmington Knights. Coach, I know that was not the game, first of all, that you wanted to play. And I don't think that was the game your team plays. I think this was a night where things just didn't go right for you and maybe things uh, didn't work out the way you planned them. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, Central, hats off to them. They played great. Um, you know, took us out of the game. They were better than us at all aspects of the game tonight. So, I mean, hats off to them. It it looked like early on that three minutes of the first quarter, it looked like both teams were evenly matched. Everything was going on. I felt like at times maybe some of your girls kind of tried to do too much, maybe tried to make the spectacular play or tried to push it a little bit too hard. Did you feel that way, or was it just the fact that Central's defense was that good? I don't know that they're trying to make a spectacular play. I think they're just trying to make a play uh, for their teammates. And, uh, you know, we just didn't do enough things right tonight, um, plain and simple, I, you know. I don't think anybody really tried to do too much. I think, uh, you know, overall, uh, you know, like I said, I just think Central took us out of the game. Now, that was a ball game that uh, I think you probably looked forward to for quite some time. Energy was up high. It didn't go the way it, it wanted to. So uh, what do you do to try to get your girls back on track and maybe get them back up and get them going again? They'll be all right. We'll come in tomorrow. We'll talk to them. Uh, we've already talked about it, um, you know, things that we need to work on, and uh, we'll come back in tomorrow and, uh, we'll start trying to get better. And I know you guys would probably like a rematch real quick, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, you always want to rematch against teams you lose against, see if you get better. Now, things don't get real much better for you. Schedule-wise, it says here that you got Festus coming into Farmington. That's coming up here in a couple of days. What are you expecting from the Festus team? Uh, I haven't really even looked at any film on them yet. Um, you know, I don't know much about them. Uh, we spent the last three days preparing for this. Um, but, um, you know, we'll get back at it. Uh, I'll probably watch some film tonight and tomorrow and come up with a game plan on uh, Friday and uh, Monday and get after it on Tuesday. All right, Coach. Well, we appreciate you coming up and talking to us. I know it wasn't the way you wanted it to go tonight, but uh, we uh, sure thank you for coming up and talking to us and uh, wish you much success in the future. All right. Thank you. I appreciate the coverage. All right. That is Rusty uh, Sanchegra, head coach of the Farmington Knights. They lose it here tonight by a final score of 66-36. to 36. And, again, I think probably this game – was supposed to be closer. We thought it was going to be closer. It wasn't. And I think that Farmington probably can play a better game. I think Central played as good as they possibly, possibly could tonight. Maybe they could get a little bit better. You never know. But this was a really, really good Central team that won here tonight. And we want to say congratulations to them. And uh, we're going to come back and give some pizza away coming up here in just a matter of moments. So keep it right here on the Parklands Sports Leader, AM 1240 KFMO. 
First State Community Bank, our mission goes beyond banking. We grow stronger communities by helping people and organizations achieve and protect financial success. Our mission is to view each transaction, each hello, each handshake, each meeting and phone call as a way to improve the lives of others. No matter how you define financial success, see our team today and we'll help you achieve it. First State Community Bank, success starts here. Member FDIC, online at fscb.com. Thinking about your next step? Think Middle Area College. We offer small class sizes, transferable credits, and tuition rates less than half of the university. It's affordable, quality education. Apply at mineralarea.edu. Middle Area College. It starts here. We're for the state of Missouri. We're for trout fishing, barbecuing, underarching, fountain swimming, road tripping, and show me saying. We're for people who would live here, people who won't, people who farm, and for people who don't. We are Missouri Farm Bureau Insurance, and if you're a Missourian, we're for you. When accidents happen, trust the experts at Griffin Automotive Design. Our dedicated team restores your vehicle to its pre-collision glory with precision and care. Your vehicle deserves the best, so visit us today for a seamless repair experience at 900 Point View Drive in Bonterre, Missouri. We're more than just a classic car restoration shop. We're also a fully equipped state-of-the-art collision center. So give us a call at 573-534-2300. Trucks, cars, SUVs, whatever you're looking for, we have it here at Lead Belt Auto Sales. Come on by and take a look at our great selection of trucks, cars, SUVs, family vehicles, and sport cars. Worried about financing? Do you have bad credit, no credit, or even great credit? Visit LeadBeltAutoSales.com to get pre-approved today. We have a vehicle for you in any payment range. Just past Mental Area College, and that's Lead Belt Auto Sales on Flat River Road. Struggling with your car but don't have a reliable shop? Wade's Auto Service is a complete maintenance and repair shop in the Parkland area since 2015. Locally owned and operated, Wade's Auto Service wants to be your first choice for all your auto service and repair needs. Plus, they offer a two-year, 24,000-mile part and labor warranty. Trust Wade's Auto Service, 228 East Harrison Street in Farmington, or give them a call at 573-664-1302. It's never too early to start crunching those numbers, downloading those forms, and organizing all those receipts you put in your shoebox. Getting frustrated yet? Yeah. Try crunching this number, 573-546-3104. Accountant Stephanie Kitchell with Kitchell Accounting and Tax Service in Ironton. Stephanie is available year-round for tax and business consulting, accounting, and bookkeeping, and payroll. Crunch that number one more time, 573-546-3104. A trusted name in the Arcadia Valley area, Stephanie Kitchell with Kitchell Accounting and Tax Service in Ironton. Looking for the perfect ride doesn't have to be stressful. Ugh. McLean Motors in Farmington is your go-to destination for pre-owned cars, trucks, and Jeeps. McLean Motors has something for everyone from rugged trucks to Jeeps, and McLean Motors offers flexible financing options to fit your budget. Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and Saturdays from 8 to 3. Drive home your dream car today from McLean Motors, located next to Dairy Queen in Farmington, where your journey on the road begins. Back here at Farmington where the uh, Central Lady Rebels win at 66 to 36. And Jared Pettis is going to join us once again. And we're going to give away some pizza. And I think we are pretty unanimous on who's going to get the pizza here tonight. Yes, yes, it's going to be Taylor O'Connor getting pizza, Glenn. 20 points to lead the way, then big threes in that second quarter that extended the advantage. What, she was 5-for-5 five five at one point yeah. out there. Uh, she had a really big game for the Lady Rebels, added seven rebounds as well. She's going to get some free free pizza courtesy of Little Caesars as the Little Caesars Pizza Pizza player of the game. Little Caesars with locations at Farmington and Deloge also has lunch at a price you can afford. Get two slices of pizza and a 20-ounce drink for just four fifty. If you're feeling a little hungrier, add a half order of breadsticks for just a dollar more, or get a four-slice deep dish pizza and a 20-ounce drink for five fifty. Available daily from 10:30 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's lunchtime at Little Caesars in Farmington and Deloge. We'll take one more break, and then when we come back, we will uh, get the out-of-town school board and wrap things up from the Black Knight Fieldhouse right after this. To everyone who's hungry for something special. Culver's is the place for us. Hi, what can I make fresh for you today? It's nice being greeted by people who are glad to see you. 
And I appreciate that they use real ingredients like fresh beef and Wisconsin cheese. The frozen custard is so fresh and creamy, it tastes like it was made just for us. It's our pleasure. Just spending time with family, that's what mealtime at Culver's is all about. From Wisconsin with love, welcome, welcome to delicious. delicious. Shop local, buy local, save big deals. It's not every day you can save money. Oh, wait, you can. Hi, Jenny here from Big Deals. When you shop Big Deals, you'll save money every day on dozens of gift certificates from local businesses like these. Colton Steakhouse, Paw Affection Pet Grooming, Charlie's Mowing Service, and Snow Removal, and the Oasis Christian Bookstore and Gifts. They're all part of our Big Deals. Shop local, buy local, save it's not every day you can save money. Oh, wait, you can. Hi, Jenny here from Big Deals. When you shop Big Deals, you'll save money every day on dozens of gift certificates from local businesses like these. Curtis Glass Center in Park Hills, Good Earth Tech Services in Bon Terre, Hobbs Pub and Grill in Bon Terre and Potosi, The Boulevard Salon and Spa in Farmington. Thinking about your next step? Think Middle Area College. We offer small class sizes, transferable credits, and tuition rates less than half of the university. It's affordable, quality education. Apply at mineralarea.edu. Middle Area College. It starts here. Final score here is the Central Lady Rebels beat the Farming tonight 66-36. And the Rebels 2-0 in the conference as they improved to 10-2 overall. Farmington falls to 9-4 and 0-1 in conference play. And it's time to get a look at the out-of-town scoreboard check courtesy of Mineral Area Overhead Door as we wrap things up from the Black Knight Fieldhouse. Fredericktown and North County from Fredericktown. And the Lady Black Cats fall to the Lady Raiders 63-49. Well, it was a big lead for North County at halftime, 42-18. Fredericktown outscored North County in that second half, but not enough. 63-49, the final score. North County gets the winner. St. Genevieve was at Potosi, and the Dragons beat the Lady Trojans 57-47. That's all on the large school. Small school side on the girls' side. Arcadia Valley beat Kingston 67-30. Braylon Turnbow had 30 points in the game. Paige Newstead Adams with 19 points. And uh, West County was at home against Bismarck. Let's see if we have an out-of-town score on that one really quickly. I'm not sure we do just yet. No, nothing yet. West County and Bismarck from West County. Valley Catholic was at home against Lesterville. And Saxony Lutheran on, uh, at home against St. Paul. And on the boys' basketball side, Valley Caledonia was set to play at Marquand. Was that game happening tonight, Glenn? Uh, that game was supposed to happen tonight. I uh, haven't heard anything from anybody on that. Uh, the last time those two teams met was over the Valley Caledonia tournament in Valley Handled them pretty well, so we'll see what happens with that. Out-of-town scoreboard check brought to you by Mineral Area Overhead Door at 1020 Woodlawn Drive just north of Farmington, providing over 40 years of great service to other customers. Visit them at mineralareadoor.com. That'll wrap things up from tonight. Farmington falls to Central 66-36. Coming up tomorrow on AM 1240 KFMO, we'll have the boys' side. And a big conference game on the boys' side. North County Raiders host the Farmington Knights. We'll be there starting with pregame at 7 o'clock, tip-off at 7.30 from Raiders gymnasium at north county high school in bon Terre, missouri then on saturday on kfmo kansas city chiefs football at six with kickoff at seven as the chiefs get the afc wild card game a wild card round rather against the miami dolphins at arrowhead stadium and on kfmo sports plus on saturday the mac men and the women travel up to moberly to take on the lady greyhounds and greyhounds we'll have coverage on the park on, on your home for mac athletic in the parkland that's kfmo sports plus starting at around 4 30 or 4 45 with tip-off times of five o'clock and seven o'clock a big region games the biggest games of the season so far for the Mac Lady Cardinals and the Mac Cardinals. That's all what's coming up on uh, the rest of the week. That's Glenn Berry. I'm Jared Pettis. Jewel Boyer doing a great job producing the video portion. And uh, Taylor LeBriar back at the studio always doing a great job producing the audio portion of our broadcast. As we wrap things up tonight, Central beats Farmington 66-36. Join us tomorrow on AM 1240 KFMO as the North County Raiders host the Farmington Knights.